What we learnt from day two of F1 testing. Two days down, one to go. The second day of the Barcelona shakedown is done and dusted. Here's what caught our eye during day two of testing. I mean shakedown, I mean pre-season running, I mean pre-season just driving around the track, but it's officially not a test, but it is a test, but it's not a test. Who knows? Our first red flag of 2022. Poor Checo. Minutes before the morning session was due to end, Sergio Perez ground to a halt at the exit of turn 13. Reportedly due to a gearbox issue, the Red Bull mechanics kept the RB18 under close inspection when it was brought back to the garage. Fortunately, four hours later, Checo was able to get back out on track, ending the day on 74 laps. And another one. Red flags are just like buses. You wait ages for one of them and then two come along at once. More than an hour into the afternoon session and nine laps in, Nikita Mazepin stopped in the second sector and triggered the red flag. Before we all crack out the Mazepin jokes, it was due to a damaged fuel pump. About an hour later, he was back up and running and actually managed to set the eighth fastest time. And with Mazepin and Schumacher putting over 100 laps on the board today, things look a bit more hopeful for Haas after the disaster of yesterday bouncing around the Barcelona circuit. One problem of F1's grand idea to switch to ground effect cars is porpoising, which happens as the speed and downforce suck the car down towards the track. When it reaches maximum speed, the ride height decreases, causing the airflow to separate and reduce downforce. This loss in pressure causes the ride height to increase, so the car then regains downforce. This creates a cycle of the car bouncing or rocking back and forth like a porpoise diving in and out of the sea. This issue is affecting teams up and down the grid, with Mercedes seeming to be one of the biggest sufferers and Ferrari's team principal Mattia Bonotto believes teams widely underestimated the problem. That doesn't sound good. Alfa Romeo's up and down day. Alfa must have been hoping for day two to go a bit more according to plan after only managing to put 32 laps on the board yesterday. They'd even flown in some new parts overnight to run the car with a lower ride height in order to control the C42's bouncing. However, Valtteri Bottas only managed to put in 21 laps before lunch, and his scheduled media session was actually called off. Yet it was a much more promising time for rookie Guan Yu Zhou, who got his first proper taste of the car and clocked in 67 laps by the end of the afternoon session. Ferrari are on form. OK, we're not all getting our hopes up just yet, although, I tell a lie, I absolutely am getting my hopes up. But you can't argue the fact that Ferrari put in another solid performance today. Leclerc topped the timing sheets, ending the day fastest with a 19.689. The Prancing Horse also led the way with their mileage, completing 150 laps. Second was Alfa Tauri's Pierre Gasly on 147. Even if they say they aren't the favourites, it looks like Ferrari are the ones at least in the hunt for 2022. Wishful thinking, maybe, Matt. There you have it, all the key things we've learned from day two of F1 testing. Which driver are you keeping an eye on this season? Let us know in the comments section below.